Hello lovelies, welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and today we're going to be talking about the Audrey Hepburn lipstick conspiracy theory. So everyone is always so curious about what lipstick Audrey Hepburn actually wore in Breakfast at Tiffany's and there's so many different stories and rumors. So I want to do my own research and get to the bottom of it and I found a few lipsticks so make sure you stick to the end of the video where I'll be swatching all the lipsticks. So there's a famous Audrey Hepburn quote from Breakfast at Tiffany's. Audrey says, hand me my purse, will you, darling? Holly says, interrupting Paul. A girl can't read that sort of thing without her lipstick. And before we get into the lipsticks, let's talk a little bit about the history behind Breakfast at Tiffany's and why it's so significant. Breakfast at Tiffany's is a 1961 American romantic comedy film directed by Blake Edwards, starring Audrey Hepburn as Holly Golightly, a naive, eccentric cafe society girl who falls in love with a struggling writer. It was adapted from Truman Capote's 1958 novel, of the same name. On October 5th, 1961, Paramount Pictures released it in theater to critical and commercial acclaim. The film was selected in 2012 for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant. It was nominated for five Academy Awards, winning two. The music, including Moon River, was nominated for six Grammy Awards, winning five. And let's talk about the movie's influence on culture through the 20th century and even in the 21st century. Audrey Hepburn's hair in the high chagon and cigarette holder in a lot of the promo photos and in the movie's trailer is considered one of the most iconic images of the 20th century in American cinema. Holly Golightly's sunglasses are another memorable piece from the film. They are Manhattan sunglasses created and made in London by Oliver Goldsmith and are frequently mistaken for Ray-Bans as well. To commemorate the 50th anniversary of Breakfast at Tiffany's, the model was re-released in 2011. I really want to get my hands on one of these. Christie's auctioned one of the three Givenchy dresses intended for Hepburn for prospective inclusion in the film on December 5th, 2006 for almost a million US dollars, so 947000 nearly seven times the reserve price. The Givenchy little black dress, which Hepburn wears in the film's opening scene, is regarded as one of the most iconic pieces of apparel in the 20th century history, and is possibly the most famous little black dress of all time. In my opinion, this film almost invented the little black dress. Hepburn as Holly wears a second little black dress in Breakfast at Tiffany's, complete with a wide brim hat when she visits gangster Sally Tomato at Sing Sing Prison. This dress was one of the outfits worn by Anne Hathaway's character Selena Kyle, Catwoman's alter ego, and Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises. The comic book Catwoman, illustrated by Adam Hughes, was based on Hepburn, producing a double reference to Hepburn's Holly Golightly in Hathaway's Catwoman. I had no idea, so I'm going to have to rewatch that movie. The Tiffany yellow diamond, which Hepburn wore in publicity images for the film, was a diamond necklace that Hepburn despised as being too dazzling. While Tiffany's reputation of being a luxury retailer was already well established, the film helped to raise its bar even higher, and I feel like everyone knows Tiffany's from the film Breakfast at Tiffany's, at least I did. And one of the most famous scenes in the movie is when she is applying her salmon pink lipstick in the back of the cab and this will always conjure up images of the heartbroken Holly Golightly and if you're a fan of Audrey Hepburn and Breakfast at Tiffany's like I am you're probably wanting to know which lipstick she actually wore because I am curious myself and I have looked it up many times but I always get different answers so bloggers and reddit threads have gone crazy trying to figure out who made her characteristic salmon pink lipstick in the film and what shade is it? So I looked on the internet and I have been looking on and off for years now and I have found many different answers and many different shades that are similar. So I've deconstructed the discussions online and compiled a list of top recommended hues so you can get her characteristic sand pink pout featured in the film. So when you do a quick google search online for the shade that Holly Golightly wore in Breakfast at Tiffany's, one of the first ones that comes up is Revlon's Pink in the Afternoon, but this color is very debatable, and let me explain to you in detail why this might not be the shade that she wore. So when you look at Pink in the Afternoon, you'll see that it's not nearly as peachy or salmon colored as the shade that she wore in the film, but that isn't even the most pressing part about this case. A UK-based cosmetic artist, Lisa Eldridge, purchased Hepburn's gold Cartier lipstick 
container at Christie's auction and she found at the bottom of the lipstick tube a small amount of the lipstick when she purchased the tube and she swatched the lipstick, produced her own batch and described it as a genuine salmon pink alluding to the scene from Breakfast at Tiffany's that was cut from the film. And Lisa claims in her video announcing the lipstick holder that the shade does not come from a brand that begins with the letter R. So she's alluding that it's not Revlon. And she vows to take the shade's name and creator with her to the grave. I feel like that's frustrating. I don't understand why she can't just like let us know who it is because clearly there's so many people like myself that want to know if that's the shade. And I was definitely about to give up on my search at this point, but then the plot deepened. So Revlon shared a shot of Richard Avedon, the, the photographer behind the majority of Revlon's 1980s lipstick ads. And this photo of Audrey Hepburn was shared on their Facebook page in 2019, wishing Avedon a happy birthday. When a follower inquired about the allegations surrounding Revlon's pink in the afternoon, the Revlon account replied, the rumors are accurate. So perhaps Lisa Eldridge has a different shade of lipstick in Audrey's lipstick case. And other Reddit postings claiming that Pink in the Afternoon was released in the 1980s, decades after Breakfast at Tiffany's. And it's also worth noting that Golightly's lipstick tube was gold, whereas Revlon's lipsticks are packaged in black bullets. And after doing some additional research, I discovered Audrey was a part of the Revlon super illustrious lipstick campaign in the 1980s. And she was seen wearing pink in the afternoon for an ad. A remark at the bottom of the ad confirms her lip and nail color. Whether or not we'll ever know for sure if Holly Golightly wore pink in the afternoon, you can still wear pink in the afternoon knowing that Audrey did wear that at some point. And Lisa Eldridge produced a limited edition lipstick called Golightly after revealing that she acquired Audrey Hepburn's lipstick container. And she still sells the gloss in the same color which I bought, so I'm going to swatch that for you. And the item is defined as follows, a coral tint that is insanely salmon pink inspired by one of Elisa's old shades, and it's reminiscent of Hollywood in the early 1960s. So it'll be interesting to try this. And she said she'd never reveal the original manufacturer or name of Hepburn's lipstick, but she did provide admirers with a fresh color match to the original that she has. And I also read online that the shade Eccentric by Estee Lauder could have been the shade that she wore in the film. And some people believe this Estee Lauder shade has more color than Revlon's Pink in the Afternoon, but it's still not as salmon as Holly Golightly's original pout. So I'm going to swatch that one as well. And also with Technicolor, I think it kind of makes things a bit more salmon-y too. So because it looks salmon-y on film, it's hard to say whether or not it looked like that in real life. And then I also have a Vintage Doll Cosmetics Audrey lipstick, which is another dupe from the film. So I'm going to swatch all of these for you and then you can be the judge to let me know which one you think looks the most like the film and if you know of any other dupes, let me know in the comments below. All right, let's jump right in and start swatching some lipstick. All right, so let's go ahead and start swatching all of the lipsticks. So I'm going to start with the Pink in the Afternoon by Revlon. So as you can see, this is a very, it's quite pink, so it's not too salmon-y. And then I'm going to do the Estee Lauder Eccentric, and as you can see on the bottom, the shade 260, it's quite salmon-y colored. So let's go ahead and swatch that one. Oh wow, this is interesting, it's like almost ideal identical to pink in the afternoon oh my god it's just weird it's so similar like i literally can't tell the difference i guess that's a good do if you're looking for one i'm like shocked how similar that is crazy and next we'll do the lisa eldridge one this is more a lip gloss. I wish she still sold the lipstick. Interesting, it's quite similar. It's just more glossy, so you can't... But it's kind of a similar tone. Try to add a bit more. And 
And then lastly, I'm gonna swatch the Vintage Doll Cosmetics Audrey. This one to me is the most salmon-y, um, 1960s looking. So it's really hard to say. The Vintage Doll Cosmetics one was swatched from the film still. So to me, it has the most salmon-y color. So this was really interesting. I'm shocked that the Revlon one is so similar to the Estee Lauder. So I'm gonna do one more up close so you can see all of the shades. So the one on the far left is the Vintage Doll. Then we have the Lisa Eldridge one. And then you got the Estee Lauder and then you got the Revlon. And the Estee Lauder and the Revlon are like literally almost the same. So I find that interesting. So I'm gonna try them on my lips now so you can see the difference. Hello lovelies. So let's go ahead and swatch some of these shades on my lips. So right now I am wearing the Vintage Doll Cosmetics Audrey shade. So I'm gonna reapply it a little bit so you can see. And it is a really nice coral shade. I also like to blot it a little bit. So this shade was actually swatched from the film stills in the movie. And I feel like it's a pretty good 1960s coral shade. So now let's move on to the next. And next let's do the Lisa Eldridge shade. Too bad I couldn't actually get the real one. But that one she doesn't have anymore. So I'm using the gloss. This one, it's really hard to say because like when you look at the tube, it looks very coral, but once you put it on, it doesn't really have much pigment. I feel like this one could look good over top of another shade. Like the vintage doll one. Or maybe one of the Revlons or, hmm. Has a bit of pigment. It does feel nice. I wish it had some sort of, um, like a little bit of a flavor. I know it sounds bad, but it like has nothing. But it feels really nice on my lips and it gives a little bit of color, but it's not too bright. So that is that one. And now let's move on to the next. And let's do the Estee Lauder one next. I like the smell of the Estee Lauder on. It kind of has like a vanilla -y scent and it goes on very clean and nice. It's funny because the bottom like swatch is very coral. But when you put it on, it's more of a pink. It is a nice shade. To me, it feels really nice on. Like it's a really nice satin smooth but when I see the movie and I think of the 1960s, I really don't see this shade that much in the 1960s. But again, it's like, look at the bottom swatch and then look at my lips. It's so different, so I'm not sure about that. And then lastly, we'll do the pink in the afternoon. I do know that Audrey Hepburn was a big fan of Estee Lauder and used Estee Lauder. So there could be a chance that she did wear that shade. And lastly is pink in the afternoon. This one's nice too. It doesn't feel as luxurious as the Estee Lauder one. In my opinion, it doesn't smell as good. It doesn't go on as creamy. And I've, it'll be interesting maybe even to do a test and see how long this lasts. Anyway, I really enjoyed doing this video. Let me know if you want me to do any other videos like this, maybe where I'm finding like other vintage shades and like dupes with like 1950s old hollywood reds or other shades i'm really curious about this too i was really surprised that the essay lauder one was so similar to pink in the afternoon but again none of them really seem very coral i know besame has some good like i think portrait pink is a nice 1960s shade um i do own that one as well and that seems more 1960s like when i see this shade i don't see the 1960s in my opinion um, it still is a nice pink shade, 
So let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Do you think Lisa Eldridge has the one from the movie or do you think she's lying? Do you think she just has another one of hers? I'm so curious. I wish she would just tell everyone, but that's not gonna happen. And again, like this seems very coral here. It's a very similar shade to that one. So it's just so hard to tell, but when they go on, they just look so different. So anyways, let me know in the comments below what you think and thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.